And so what is, how would you sum up what this station is doing? What's the purpose of this station? It's for measuring the water in the snow and for figuring out the timing of when that water is going to end up in the rivers. That's what the River Forecast Center is doing with the data out of here. And why, why is it important? Most of BC, most of the cities <clears throat> are built in uh, low-lying areas near rivers and streams. And uh, so pretty much all of the residential and industry and so it's water all supply for drinking property water. Property in BC is next to next to rivers, so it's for flood forecasting, for public safety, and and for uh, predicting water supply. And is that why you know it's important to you know what's the importance of accuracy and reliability at a station like this? Well, it it, it could be life and death, but uh, you know if there's a flood and you don't know when it's going to happen. But uh, these are for managing the water supply too. If uh, we, we flew over the reservoir on the way up here, and um, so they're trying to figure out how much water's up here, so they don't uh, release too much out of there. And uh, hmm. you know this is this is an, this is another reserve of water that's all up in the mountains that's going to end up down in the reservoir. So knowing what's happening up here helps them manage what's in the reservoir. Is any of this data being used for, you know, for climate change purposes? Are they looking at? They're starting to do that. Uh, the The snow record is an important record for climate because it's uh, in in, some, in parts of BC the precipitation is is a snow dominated precipitation, so that's how mm. most of the water arrives in those parts of BC. Right. So if you want to know what's happening with the climate, you need to know how much precipitation you're getting. The, the sensor that's, that's most important for that is the snow pillow, which is essentially a, a bladder that sits on the ground and when snow falls on it, uh, it squeezes liquid out of the bladder into a, into a pipe and we measure the height of the liquid in the pipe and that tells us how much water is in the snow. This one is one of our most easily accessible stations and it's about a 15 minute helicopter flight out of Generally, stations are located where they won't be bothered by people because uh, anyone walking on the area where we're measuring the snow is going to upset the measurements. The newer stuff is much easier to use, and uh, so configuring, installing, and uh, deep, you know, figuring out what's going on with them is, is much, much easier than the old ones. And I, I would put a that's nice, but the, the newer stuff is much more reliable too. So. so, did you have to make unscheduled visits just to service something about the data before? Yeah, uh, the builder stuff. Yeah, we were having problems with the with the reliability they were putting on us, and uh, we would have to call them and figure out what's going on. The uh, helicopter flight typically costs about eight hundred.
it's just much, much more straightforward. Was it just an inconvenience with having to bring, so it sounds like you'd bring a laptop, but you'd bring some redundancy as well. So yeah. Whether it be have a, a bat, probably a, you, you need to bring another laptop because well, hard we drives were, can fail. And, yeah, we were bringing two, bringing two laptops for a while there. And uh, even then, I, I had uh, experience where it was just so cold and so much trouble with the laptops, even though they've been charged in town, they got cold on the helicopter flight out there. And uh, everything would go dead. It's just, it's just more more stuff to deal with when it's there. So you don't have that. You just come in and you have a, a stylus to touch the screen, and that's that's all you have to pack with you. you there's even a stylus there hanging on a cable, so you, you can't even forget that. Are there any kind of weight restrictions in the helicopter? Like, was it a financial yeah. hit to bring two like redundant equipment? Yeah, you'll see how much gear we're bringing today, and. Uh, just the physical space in these helicopters where we start to push the limits and uh, we're pushing the weight limits too of these smaller helicopters. We want to want to go as small as possible just because of the cost but then um, when you take a pilot, two passengers and the gear that you have to take and the fuel that we have to take to get out to these places, uh, the helicopters we've been running sometimes you know, very close to the safety limit that um, the machine has. And, so if you can cut weight out, anything you can cut out helps with that, with safety and with extending the range and saving cost. So a couple of laptops would be adding 50 pounds to the load, and that 50 pounds really can make a difference. That, you know, that, that could allow you to either bring, bring a battery or bring other gear that, that you need. It could, it could mean bringing a safety pack or not, and whether or not you have food to, to last over a night if you got caught out here. So it, it does make a difference. Connectors are a big improvement. Uh, what we were using before is uh, terminal scripts that needed a small screwdriver to get the, uh, the bare, bare wires in and out to terminate them. And uh, with the number of sensors that we have at each of these stations, and again, the generally harsh conditions we're working under, uh, using a little jeweler screwdriver and uh, trying to keep all the wires straight while you swap out one logger for another. Just it adds time, it adds uh, risk of making mistakes with the wiring, that used to happen pretty often. Where you get, get the thing going and something wouldn't work and you got to go back over all the wiring and make sure everything's right. So with the new bayonet connectors, if you want to swap a logger out, you just grab all the connectors in and probably 20 seconds you can have them all, all disconnected. None of the wires are going to get mixed up and you plug them all back in. The SDI interface is nice too because with only one exception, it doesn't really matter which uh, port or which assignment the cables go in, the logger will take care of detecting all that stuff and sort it all out itself. You just have to double check and make sure that one of those got onto the right channel in, in the configuration. And other than that, it, it's pretty much uh, idiot proof, which is good for a guy like me. Do you Are you paying the helicopter service per hour? Like, do, does time mean money if you spend less time actually at the site? Does that make a financial difference? Yeah, it does uh, in two ways. One, uh, the less flying we do, it is, it is built by the hour, so the less flying we do, the better. The amount of time on the ground, uh, if I'm there longer, there are times of year where the helicopters are busy, so the guy can't wait for us. So he'll drop us off and come back and pick us up, so right away that doubles the flying charge. So if I can get in and out of there in uh, under an hour, that makes a difference. Um, it, it's true that the older gear did have more sort of unexplained failures. That uh, you know you bench tested in town and everything's working fine. You get it out to the field and it just didn't work anymore. So I don't think I've seen that at all with any of the, the new equipment we're using now. When the economy turned down in uh, 2008, the government really came through uh, with a sharp pencil and put hiring freezes on and things like that. So um, there was a lot of concern because the staff for this program was cut in half. And uh, so reliability of equipment and cost of 
getting out to the field and the number of people involved and all that really suddenly made a huge difference. So it's one of the reasons why the newer equipment, sorry, uh, uh, has let us survive that. It's something that I guess we forget about from time to time that we are now surviving with half the staff that we had before. And uh, any, anything that we can do to make things more efficient and run with fewer people has helped. Site visit report, 36 minutes, 36 to, minutes to in total. Um, and do you even, did you even use site visit reports with the old loggers? It was all done on paper, all done manually. So there's a time to actually, um, would you fill it out here? Yeah. Well, it's still fresh in your memory, so yeah. add that on. So, okay. Yeah. So electronic site report is done automatically yeah. for you, but total time to swap it out, it said 36 minutes? Well, that, yeah, that included uh, draining the gauge and... Um tallying that all up and everything. So 36 from beginning to end of the visit. Okay. And what, you know, how how does that compare to other loggers that you Well, you the had? loggers we had before, if we had that happen, um, I've had experience more than once where I stuck another logger in and there something went wrong during the install and it didn't work and we did it another time. But you'd be lucky to get in, in and out under an hour just to swap the logger. So total end, apples to apples, it'd be about half an hour to uh, one uh, hour half an hour to a couple of hours a couple of hours wow that's huge and that whole time either you know is, is a helicopter waiting for you at those times or are they always taking off and waiting and just coming back ideally we get them to wait but if we take a long time they can't so they have to leave and go do other business and come back so it doubles our cost so I guess yeah when you do push it to a couple of hours you're you're risking and ending up with two flights instead of one right Huh. So, uh, that's dramatic. Yeah, it's a big cost saving. All right.